we watched him oh, okay. roll with somebody. Yeah. Pixley. Yeah. It was the most brutal thing I've ever seen. The three of them. Because that kid was honestly maybe a little bit of a jerk. But still, like, it was brutal. Yeah. And so we're talking about it. I go over, and I'm legitimately terrified of this. Okay? <laughs> right? I go over, and I have a question, because I saw him do this move, which is fascinating. Yeah. No, it was, it was like, I've, I've been doing this since April, so anything I see is new, right? You're probably like, oh, of course you do that. But like, I saw him do this, and I wanted to ask him about it. And he's using this, mo the most friendly voice that I've seen yeah. in a long time, right? Yeah. And there is this <laughs> juxtaposition between his voice mm -hmm. and a face that says, I will eat your soul. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, you got me. Yeah, what yeah, is yeah. it? Describe it. Saw. Yeah. Oh yeah, watch every single one. Yeah, there's one I remember where they like. Which one? How do you? They reach into. <laughs> Thirteen. Yeah. You. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. They turn it. They have to turn all the way around. Google, Google, Skype, Snapchat, Snapchat, Snapchat. Yeah, that dude's probably kind of fat. That's a chick, bro. Thanks everybody for coming. I appreciate it. Um, so I'll tell you guys this story real quick. When I was uh, when I was uh, 15, I, I took a Greyhound bus. This was like back in the 1800s, a long time ago. Uh, and it was my first seminar and I went out and it was two hours long and it was like 130, 40, 150 bucks. And I saved up forever and I went out and did the seminar and then the guy showed like one or two things and then they all took pictures and then I was completely devastated. It was like the worst experience of my entire life. So. I always said, if there's a point in time when I'm ever able to do seminars or camps for the same price that I paid, I'm gonna run three full day camps. So I uh, just wanted to kind of let everybody know where that idea came from and uh, they're really special to me. So I hope everybody enjoys them. Uh, something that's really important. Guys, if you get shown anything and you don't get it, ask. I'll stay here until five in the morning to make sure everybody has whatever they need. Just ask, okay? Ask any of the guys that I brought if they don't know ask me okay if you're wondering where big giant jacob couchhead is they're fighting tomorrow morning they'll be here a couple hours after that so there's like seven more of them coming okay so uh to, to get started up here i'm gonna have michael pixley he's gonna show a couple takedowns so guys uh, in, in the 25 years that i've been training i've uh, i've never felt or experienced anything like michael's takedowns he's an ncaa champ um it's really incredible. Uh, the reason that I really like uh, bringing him and having him show is because the takedowns that he does are, they don't get you in any trouble. So if you miss the opportunity for the takedown, you're not in any trouble and you can keep doing what you do. So I really, really enjoy them. So let's get started. I'll have him uh, show a couple takedowns that are really nice for you guys, break them down slow, and uh, then we'll uh, get into some guard passing stuff and train and get some questions answered, all right? I right, appreciate everybody. So Michael, Put the glick on the blick. Just some glizzy. Put a little bit of the sperm on it. You got good gas and you got mids. Get you guys started. Let me show the five Yeah, please. Um, who do you want to throw down? Oh, yeah. We're not going to throw you down. <laughs> All right, guys. So the first one's just basic partner and pal, guys. We're going to over tap. That means we're going to grab over his arm, grab his far ear. Pull his, uh, pull his head to his bicep. Okay. Yeah, like, push. Okay. Nice. And then, this foot's gonna catch right to the pig. That's dirty, bro. <laughs> More dirty. Here. Oh my god. Well, the first drill off that shit, I'm like, no, it ain't never that easy. Hey, it is. <laughs> oh my god, it's never that easy, bro. That's like crazy. Stuff, you know, when you get some guard passing and uh, get it set up for tomorrow so you can think about it all night. And, yeah. 
So passing the guard, I want Jacob's heels on his butt, especially in no gi, because there's nothing for me to grab, okay? So if I'm not coming down and smash pass, I'm starting here, okay? I need to put his knees or his heels on his butt with my knee, because here he can lift me up, okay? He's powerful, okay? When I put him here, it's less powerful, okay? So got a partner, guys, if you came with someone, you can train with them anytime. Get out there and mix it up. My guys probably stink a little bit, but they are helpful. And you can get in to pass all this stuff is 10 times easier, okay? So pass with your knees and your hips, not your hands, okay? All right, go ahead. Think about that pressure. If you're on bottom, tell them if they have good pressure or shit pressure, okay? Mine's already shit. <laughs> Yo, this is that knee size pass. Uh, is the microphone on? Yeah. <sighs> yep. It's Farley. Because you live in a wet down by the river? Oh, I can't remember what he says. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> I live in a van down by the river. I live in a van down by the river. Step your eyes. Yeah, so if you're on top, you're staying on top the whole time, okay? Go. Show, show, show some hands. Yeah. So Y'all don't want nothing to do with them bitches. All right, yeah, I'm Jesse Rieger, Flashback Martial Arts, African, Wisconsin. I've been training under Rodrigo the entire time, Rodrigo Baggi, out of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, here with Daisy Fresh for the three-day seminar, training camp. This is our second time having them here. They're our teammates under Team Baggi. Very happy to have them, and everybody's just loving what we're doing here, working our butts off, getting some stuff done. You know, just kind of doing it today. How long have you been training? I've been training since, well, when I first did jiu-jitsu was 2003, I think. And I did a tournament, I did the Helsinki Gracie tournament in 2005 as a white belt. Uh, won one, lost one, won one, lost one. Got killed by a wrestler, I had no idea how to wrestle. It's fun, thought I was gonna puke. That made it through. Oh yeah, so what, uh, what got you into jiu-jitsu? The reason I got into jiu-jitsu was an amateur kickboxer. And uh, the guy who trains with me here too, Bill Krieg, he's been training under Rodrigo for a long time. And we were at a, it's a closed down Taekwondo school down the road. And we went in there to do some kickboxing training and Bill showed up and he's just kind of sitting on the mats. But I knew, I knew that he did jujitsu. He's a blue belt at the time. It's like the highest thing we had. We went in there to work and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try this thing. I never wanted to wrestle before. I was in shape, tough guy, you know? And it was amazing because when I got down there and started fighting with him, I realized that I couldn't, I couldn't use any of my punching. I wasn't trying to punch him. But I couldn't punch or kick. It felt like I was in quicksand. I felt like a little baby. And I, I remember telling him, like, I'm a grown ass man. Like, there's no reason for this. You know, it's ridiculous. So it planted a seed. I didn't start training right away, but it planted a seed in my mind. Like, this is so legit. Like, I have to be doing this. There's no way around it. What, and what year was that? Whenever? I, I want to say that was like, let me see. It's probably like 2002 or three. It's a long time ago, man. Uh, we named our gym. It was, it was an idea that I had, because flashback is like a memory, trying to remember something, and it's kind of a reference to remember where you came from. So every time I think about it, it just reminds me, like, don't forget where you came from. You know, you don't want to, like, get bogged down on the nonsense. You know, you just want to stick with, you know, your team, who's done right by you and everything else. You just want to make sure that that's the thing that's happening. You know, we, we can forget, like, what we're all about sometimes. We want to make sure that everybody understands, like, even if they leave, that they remember where they got to where they are and who did that with them and who their friends are, who's for real, you know? I never want to forget about that. Yeah, he says you work in, in a mill. In the, yeah, okay. I work in a mill, I'm a machine operator there. I don't work in the office or anything like pizza oh, okay. trying to pick on me. <laughs> it's hot, there's no air conditioning or anything in there, so I'm, you know, if you don't have a fan, it's, it's deadly. But, you know, it's all right. I love it there. I meet a lot of different people. Sometimes I get people from there to train. I'm always talking about jujitsu. They're always asking me about it. So it's pretty cool. I work a full-time job, usually about 50 hours a week there. And I work, I don't call it work, but it's Monday through Saturday. And if I do private lessons, I do Sunday too. So last, I don't know, I think this is like my 20th day in a row here or something. I just keep training. I love it here. This is where my friends are. And, you know, we're just all trying to get better, but yeah, I mean, I love to work. I, I hate to admit I don't tell everybody all the time, but I'm kind of self-destructive. So if I don't stay busy, it's not good for me. Right. Vacation is horrible for me. So this is where I'm good. This is where I'm happy. Yeah, yes. I don't know. <laughs>
So, uh, hardly us to the fifth one. So, real quick, where this one's missing, don't go in that one. It's too low. It's just missing. Oh, I did that. Uh, I did exactly what you said. Yeah, yeah. You only have to go in each hole once, so if you already touched it, don't go back and put it in. <laughs> That's fun. Don't go in the same hole with mine. Oh. Oh, dude, I can do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it for you. You're gonna do it. Hey, when I first uh, saw you doing jiu was when I first did it. You know what happened? He told you you were going in the same hole. Every time. You're doing good. And then he's, when he told you not to, it threw you off. Yeah, look out! Look out! Yeah. Yeah. Oh God! Oh God! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! Let they ass know! Let them fucking know! At least get to the R! At least get to the R! Fuck! I missed! Yeah, at least finish it! And tomorrow do it! Come on, ready? Come back from the bottom and you got it! That's true! That's true! That's all of them! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! You got it! You're so fucking close, bro! Hey, you running that shit? No, run that shit back tomorrow, bro. I'll do that again tomorrow. Remember our vision quest? Before we went out, wrestling is not a team sport. Oh, you got it, 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 you it explained well, and a lot of it, I just wanted to see, you know, if these guys were real. You know, a lot of nowadays, you see a lot of guys, and they're just, they're just not good people. And it was, it was really cool to come here and just see, you know, how real these guys were. And it was just like, you know, being at my normal gym, just hanging out and doing jujitsu. If you ask me, what's the biggest thing that I think, and this is just my opinion, I don't really know shit, but uh, what's, what's my biggest opinion for uh, what, what gyms are doing wrong, it's this. Yeah, and then in the tournament, the guy blasts double you, puts you on your ass, you're exhausted in two minutes and have no idea what happened, and rethinking your whole life. It's because you can't train soft and compete hard. That hit me hard. Okay? So, Stay hard. <laughs> so, you gotta go. You guys, if you're not going hard, and look, there's some, some, you know, you know how hard you can go with certain people, okay? you should be pushing the pace on them. If you're not doing that for them, you're, you're enabling them, okay? So it's just as much your fault if you're not going hard on someone. It's the opposite. At most gyms, probably 90% of the gyms in the United States, if you roll too hard, you're an asshole. At our gym, if you don't roll hard, you're an asshole. So, and that's how it should be. I mean, yeah, this, it, this, it, even if it's a hobby for you, you want to be the best at what you can do. Drilling and all that stuff, it's wonderful. And going slow, like I said, sometimes you just want to come in and just move around. But when you're getting ready for competitions, your heart rate should be above 185 all, the entire day, the whole, the whole time you're rolling. I mean, you have to be pushing the pace. If it's not, when you get out there, this is why you're exhausted. You're not used to that, to that feeling, okay? When, when you start thinking another thing, real quick, for competition. One of the main things that I noticed coaching at, the, at the, the highest level, I'm talking about world championship finals and PANS finals. Okay, these are the biggest tournaments in the world. The one thing that I see is when, when guys get down, they start to look over at the clock, or girls, they look over at the clock and say, oh my God, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose. Inst instead of trying to win, they are so concerned about losing, they just keep looking over at the clock, keep looking over at the clock. Guys, you're out there for however long, white belt five, blue six, purple seven, brown eight, black 10. Enjoy the entire time, okay? 
I remember playing basketball in junior high one time and, and, and being wasn't going to score 30 points in one game and being down on myself. And the guy said, dude, you're not enjoying the time. Enjoy the time. There's a long time. There's seven minutes in each period. You have to enjoy the entire time that you're out there and make every second count. Okay, don't keep looking at the clock. Look at the clock. Look at the clock. Don't do that. Also, if you get up by an advantage or a point, don't stop trying not to win. Guys start trying not to lose. They'll get up and they'll start squeezing and then you lose control that way. Keep imposing your will on the person the entire time. Do this in class too. Pay attention to the mat. Pay attention to where you're at. Mat awareness is extremely important. Watch high level college wrestling. The guys always know where they're at on the mat, okay? Go into any wrestling room in the world. You will get your head slapped, shut down to the mat, and your feelings will probably get hurt if you're not used to that. That's because it's extremely intense and you just have to bring it up. Being an asshole and training hard are two different things. Remember that. So just create the environment. You know what I mean? Tell people, hey, go, go a little bit. Can you go hard on me? Can you pass hard on me? I have this coming up. So just keep all that in mind. So when someone's knee cutting you or they're pushing you down, don't get your feelings hurt. You want to be better, right? You want to make everyone around you better, which is even more important. Okay, so just, just something that I wanted to add real quick. So uh, get out there and really go after stuff. Find a good drilling partner that will let you get it in and, and, and really try to bang with them, okay? And like I said, always keep everyone's age and, and uh, you know, and, and gender and everything and, and, you know, and your thoughts. But people are a little bit tougher than you think they are, okay? So, all right. So, the very first camp, camp one of the first camps we did was here. And then we went to Florida, Cape Corral to Black Tie, to Corey Browns. Then after we left Corey Browns, we went to Linden, Virginia, to Shannon, Shannon Arts, which was Corey's hometown. And Billy Shannon was his best friend, and they like didn't know each other to Jiu Jitsu. And now we're back here, and Jesse has on his shirt. So everywhere we go, every, everywhere we go, Corey is around. <laughs> I was asleep. That's why he's fun. That was tough. Wisconsin camp, what'd you think so far? Man, you know how it is. Anywhere he is, it's a good time. So, how far was that? Was it for you? Roughly 17 hours. So, well worth it. Josh drove a whole three hours. So, I got some sleep this time. Ready for AJP next week. Watch out. I'm going to show you guys real quick a little sliding pass. It's one of my favorite ones, especially for some of you older guys. Some of these kids and flexible people have amazing, amazing guards. It's like the whole time we're just busting our ass to get around the guard, and then no matter what, who knows what I'm saying? No matter what. So here's what we're gonna do. He's gonna have his legs up. We're gonna push the feet, okay? So I don't want him to touch me. I just wanna push his feet. Um, I started started training oh. in 2009. Try not to get knocked out by the door. Uh -huh. uh, 2009, I started training um, I love jujitsu like so much. At first, I didn't even think I liked it because Jesse started jujitsu first, mm -hmm. and I would watch him roll. And uh, I wanted to spend more time with him. And he said, "If you want to spend more time with me, you got to come to the gym. <laughs> Just come to the gym and roll with me." And uh, yeah, so I got into it because Jesse was in it. We were in our house for a while, mm -hmm. like for a few years, just so we could stay loyal to. Um, Rodrigo Vaghi and then uh, the streets kind of started filling up with cars because a lot of people wanted to train with us at our house uh, we just asked for like donations or like 25 bucks a month to help because we didn't have any money three boys three little boys and we wanted mats in our house like so bad and then more people kept coming so then we tore down a wall in our house bought more mats um, it just got kind of crazy it was pretty cool we started turning our house into a gym um, I was almost to the point where I wanted mats in the kitchen just because more people kept coming and I'm like, let's just do it. 
Um, and then I was gonna call to get um, insurance because our, our gym kept growing and then she said we couldn't do that. So we uh, stopped classes that day and came out and uh, we put our boys in the car and we started looking for places around and we found this place and we loved it and we, we signed the lease and we've been here ever since. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you guys have been here for how long now? Almost eight years. It's so fortunate. Like me and Jesse talk all the time. Uh, we've been together 21 years. It's easy. It's like the easiest thing I've ever done is be with Jesse. <laughs> it's just it's too hard. <laughs> I just love him so much. It's this like jujitsu saved my life. Um, it's just great. Jesse's great. I love him to death. And we do everything together. We trust each other. Like our relationship is built on trust. See you later, Ty. <laughs> no problem. Um, everything's just beautiful. I, I, um, I was in a bad place when I met Jesse and so was he and we just saved each other's lives. Mm -hmm. And we've just been building each other up ever since then. We've just always been here for each other. And we're gonna continue to do that. Like we'll be here at this location forever till I die. I just love it here. Like I hope that it just, it continues to happen. Cause we're growing as a family. Flashback's awesome. All our people here are awesome. I love every single person here at this gym. Like I love every single one. We all just get along, we're great. We do cookouts at our house all the time. We drink, we have fires, we train jujitsu. We just do everything together. Everybody at Flashback, it's our second family. And my boys do jujitsu, they're with us all the time. That's another thing Jesse and I talk about, like we're so lucky that we can be here all the time together and that our family is with us. Like our boys are with us all the time, either training jujitsu or striking, but they're always here with us training. It's, it's cool. What were your thoughts on the camp and the hotel thing? I freaking love it. Uh, the first time I ever met Heath in my life was last year when he came to Flashback. He said this was his first camp he ever did. Uh, Jesse reached out to him and Heath came here. We had the, the best, most amazing time ever. Like when the guys had to leave last, last year, like couch, like I hit it off with couch and Tad and you and Alejandro and, and, and Spatchy. Like it was just awesome. Like I just loved you guys to death. I just remember like giving you guys those oils. <laughs> like, we just had fun. Like we just connected, and I, 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 I just, I had to stay connected with with good people, and I just, I need, yeah, I don't know how to explain it. But you guys are great. Like you guys mean so much to me. It's great, and I didn't want you to leave, and it was hard for me when you guys left. Like really hard. Like I was sad, and we were just so happy to have you guys back again. It's great. The training's amazing. You guys are amazing. We like to do the big cookout with you guys every time because that's what we do. It's family, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't like it when people leave and go out to eat. So just having the big, huge cookout, it was it was awesome. So here's what we're gonna do. As soon as a person stands up, okay, guys. I always want to take my my toes and I want to almost curl around his hips so I can grab him and pull him back into like poles, okay? So we're gonna shoot this through. Final final day, final session of the camp. It's really good. Good turnout. Good people. Pretty excited. We've actually done one here before, so they're like so much ahead that it really, really helped where we can move on to the really, really good shit. So I uh, appreciate Jesse bringing us up a second time, and it's almost the same group, so it's badass. I think we learned more here than we've learned in the last months. few months. Yeah, it was elsewhere. a lot of information. We watched your YouTube channel, and then we randomly happened upon you. It was completely random. It's we awesome. had no idea, and we said, that's not that far, we can make it. The nicest individuals that I've met in a long time, right? But you're also the most terrifying individuals I've met in a long time. <laughs> Everybody who rolled with me was really nice and polite and they weren't going super rough because obviously I'm a lot smaller than everybody else here. I mean anybody who was walking by was just noticing like you're doing this particular technique wrong. They just pointed out real quick or you know drop in and, and tell you what was going on. So that was that was awesome and all those comments were super helpful too. So awesome guys. That's cool. great. Hi I'm Alex. <laughs> I'm from East Arizona and I'm a white belt. One of my friends forced me to watch all the videos straight through in one night. So I've seen the whole thing. So I was nervous kind of coming here because I am a smaller female and I'm a white belt. I don't know anything. Everyone was good to roll with. And the technique wasn't, I didn't feel like the technique was something that was super hard or something that like was applicable only to bigger dudes, which was nice. It was something that I can actually use when I roll. The camaraderie of the guys that come through here, um, they show high level leadership, all their high level belts, work with everybody, they teach things in a, in a very user friendly way. Um, 
The whole team is great about lifting each other up and lifting up the people at the camp, uh, making sure that they don't move on until everybody's got it. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive thing to see and to watch. On the, on the mats, the nice thing is these guys, these guys train hard. They force you to train hard. But you get off the mats, these are the friendliest guys you're gonna run into. Um, they're definitely gonna lift you up and uh, make you feel comfortable with what you're doing and uh, push you to be the best that you can be. So I think that's what I like best. The, the two times that I spent the weekend with these guys. I wanted to be, yeah, I wanted to be a you know a ninja when I was a kid, and I would have loved to be a kid, you know, when jujitsu was around. I didn't yeah. have that, you know, I'm a little older, so I didn't, I didn't have that opportunity. But um, do you like jujitsu as you got into it? No, I like it. It's not a forced thing. <laughs> it kind of started that way. It's not a forced thing. Hell. It kind of started that way, so you could you know defend himself against bullies and stuff. Sure. Now it just turned into like. Lifestyle. It, it was great because because uh, you got like a slightly different perspective from each one of you guys mm -hmm. to think about like you've changed you know my bear or my uh, uh, Delahiva totally bloom you know blew, yeah 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 they gotta get in line you guys are getting booked man <laughs> you guys are awesome dude you guys are, they they're missing out if they don't uh, you know reach out to you guys man you guys are awesome you know how to pace yourselves with, with, with uh, different schools you guys I think you guys realize yeah this guy this school is more of a hobbyist school this and you guys know how to like okay this guy wants to want to play a little rough we can play a little rough with them just to see how just to help them level up you know you guys are not looking to just just take everyone out you know I mean you guys could but you guys just wanting to help everyone improve you know mm -hmm. I mean I think I that's the best thing I do not think it's fair for him to have a white belt. Oh hell no! It is no. not. It's he, not right. He, I really. I thought it was just a flex. Best, best blue belt in the world. Best blue belt in the world right here. Hey, my my white belt turning brown. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> he's only been training for six months, so he makes him wear the white. But deep down inside, his heart is blue, <laughs> and so are his balls. <laughs> No. Hey, blue. <laughs> 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 <laughs>